Greetings and welcome back to room 303 and our talks with Walt as we are calling our discussions with the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. We are now to section number 19, yes, the last section of starting from Pominock. We made it, you made it, congratulations. And I want to remind you of all the times we've been here before. For those of us that have worked through all of the lectures of all of the books of Iliad and Odyssey and Aeneid and Dante's uh, Divine Comedy, and I'm going to reference here especially Milton's Paradise Lost, because as I said at the conclusion of my lectures on Paradise Lost, dude, you make it through the end of Paradise Lost, you have done something. Now, we're not going to talk uh, in grandeur language about our making it through uh, Whitman until we obviously get to Fancy, the last poem of the deathbed edition of Lisa Grass, but let's go ahead and at least pat ourselves on the back and say, hey, 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 it's no small thing to get through all of the 18 sections of starting from Pominock and now we are to the famous O poem, as it's sometimes we refer to here. Ten O's in six lines and five exclamation points. You think that maybe we're coming to a crescendo to end? Obviously, that's, what hap that's what's happening. Now, my assumption is you've been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net. Down that left-hand side, Talks with Walt, the inscriptions, 24 poems, and then, of course, the previous 18 poems, along with an introduction to starting from Pominock. And now we're ready to move to the actual last lines of the, of the poem, starting from Pominock. And I actually want to begin with a quick observation um, from Norton's. The reader should compare this section 19 with its first 1860 version in which the calamus sentiment of adhesiveness is expressed in lines that were dropped from all succeeding editions. The, maybe the language a little bit too sexual. Both the first 1855 edition and the third 1860 edition are now available in inexpensive reprints. And it is a fascinating thing, although we won't do it, to go back and pay attention to that one um, um, it, on your own. I'll let you do that. The other thing I want to point out is that the word camaretto gets used again. And I just want to remind you that this really is a favorite word of Walt Whitman for comrade. And it's used seven times, right, beginning with um, it, it, a song of myself. Um, it, it's really not the, the present French camaraderie nor the French camarada, uh, but as Louis Pound uh, noted in Walt Whitman and the French language um, in American Speech in, in May of 1926, uh, it's a, a quote, old English form of the Spanish word which he had from the Waverly novels, end quote. So as we now look at this poem, we're going to meet camarada right from the start. Let's go to work quickly. Oh, Camaretto close, oh you and me at last, in us two only. Oh, a word to clear one's path ahead endlessly. Oh, something ecstatic and undemonstrable. Oh, music wild. Oh, now I triumph and you shall also. Oh, hand in hand, oh, wholesome pleasure. Oh, one more desirer and lover. Oh, to haste, firm, holding. To haste, haste on with me. Now, there isn't any question that this poem at the end of Starting from Palmanach is a crescendo-like poem. Let's annotate now quickly, though, how he plays this game. All the repetitions of O begin to, obviously, they're going to remind us of James Joyce's Ulysses and the famous Yes, and I'll hold up, I mean, just you can jot down the three, all of the poems that come to mind here, this O, 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 over and over again. Obviously, it's as well, potentially, some kind of sexual type of language as well. Notice we start with Camaretto. We saw it in Passage 9. We're going to see it at the conclusion of Song of the Open Road. And then notice the word close, right? And that word close is an intimate word, and then the first of a number of these exclamation points, five of them, right, in the, in the uh, six lines, five, five exclamation points. Oh, you and me, and then that interesting at last. In other words, it's taken a while. As a fallibilist epistemologically, I think I'm right, I could be wrong, um, he recognizes there will be some readers who are not that tuned into the work that I'm doing, and so here we are at last, us, to, and then the ironic use of the word only. Obviously, this is intimate language. Some will consider it even sexual language. But notice the word only. And the irony is, of course, that if a whole bunch of people are reading these sets of lines, then obviously it isn't just the two of us. And yet, Whitman has this amazing capacity to make it feel like it's just you and him together. It's quite a remarkable thing. Oh, 
a word, and we think back about words, 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 and the way in which Hamlet, we use that with Polonius, and the way the word word and logos obviously has been used throughout already, starting from Pominach. To clear one's path, can't help but think of your Dante when you're playing that game, ahead, endlessly. This notion that this is an ongoing project for us, it's never ending, and Whitman is saying, I am the, I, I'm going to help you find the path over and over again. We obviously think about uh, the, the, the famous uh, poem uh, of uh, Robert Frost, Two Roads Diverged in a Path, I Took the One Less Traveled By, that's made all the difference. Notice, oh, something, and then this is the right word, ecstatic, right? There is something really powerful, the energy of this poem is going to capture us, and undemonstrable, that is to say, translinguistic. In other words, in the end, there can't be a proof, as he's going to say later in uh, other places, there can't be a really a proof or a test for wisdom. It's not learned in schools, he'll say, in his arguments in Song of the Open Road. Oh, music wild, and he loves to finish this line with the word wild, and obviously this is a key through all of the reading of Leaves of Grass. He's setting us up to say, oh, we got way more wild stuff coming, obviously. Song of Myself is about to start. Oh, and then he uses this immediacy language. Now I triumph. I am the winner. Again, it's always been about the contest, and he's pointed this out, the wrestling and all of that. I triumph. Notice the dash to remind us of Emily Dickinson. And you shall also. This will take us to the opening lines of Song of Myself, part one. I celebrate myself and sing my Myself and what I assume you shall assume. For every atom belonging to me is good belongs to you. So in other words, in the way Whitman, Whitman is, very, is very much about symbiosis. If I win, you win. In other words, we all win here. I triumph, you triumph. In other words, you've made it. It's almost as if he's congratulating on you, you on getting all the way to the 19th section of starting from Pominock, right? And then he uses the Milton language. And I think in the back of his mind, so much of starting from Pominock is about Milton, the beginning and the end. Of course, we've already said it, th attempting things yet uh, unattempted yet in prose and rhyme. And we've heard that same sentiment in terms of those opening lines of Paradise Lost. But now to the conclusion of Paradise Lost. Hey, just back to it. I mean, obviously I've given lectures on all this stuff at LearnStrong.net, but do you remember these lines as, as we began? They, Adam and Eve, looking back, all the eastern side beheld of paradise, so late their happy seat, waved over by that flaming brand. And some of you go, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's a whole lot of symbolism just in the four lines he read from starting from Pominach. The gate with dreadful faces thronged and fiery arms, some natural tears they dropped but wiped them soon. The world was all before them where to choose their place of rest and providence their guide. They, hand in hand with wandering steps and slow, through Eden took their solitary way. I would like to point out, by the way, go back and look at your copy of Paradise Lost and see how wandering is spelled as an elighted, and we're going to play the same game all the way through. Now this, of course, hand in hand in Paradise Lost is central. When hands are held, that's good. When hands are broken or not held, that's bad, obviously indicating the fall. We, we've given all those lectures. Notice here to finish now. Oh, hand in hand. And then again, notice the use of the dash, like Emily Dickinson. Oh, wholesome pleasure. Now, it's almost as if Whitman is aware that a lot of people are just going to call what he's doing here body and low and rank and obscene. And he goes, no, no, no. When I'm, the game I'm playing is a wholesome pleasure, right? And obviously we think about Wordsworth and his, and his whole, all, so many times he's referencing in Ten Turn Abbey of those lofty thoughts, wholesome pleasures. Oh, one more desirer and lover. In other words, it's he's collecting lovers as readers. It's incredible how he finishes, how he finishes starting from Pominach because he gets ready for us to begin Song of Myself. It's almost as if he's saying, now that you've made it with me thus far, and I'm going to make this argument with you with our Talks with Walt lectures, now that you've made it this far, you are ready to jump into Song of Myself, all 52. And I wonder when we get to the end of the 52 section, if we'll look back to section 19 and see if there's a similar kind of ending to that long poem. Oh, and then he's going to use haste three times. He loves this word. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, haste, firm holding. Now, we saw this firm holding in, in earlier poems as well, right? To haste... Haste on with me. And again, this, the fact that starting from Pominach ends with the word me 
and then immediately we start with Song of Myself, I celebrate myself and sing myself. So much of what we've learned in our study of inscriptions on those 24 poems, and now the 19 poems of starting from Pomenoc will get us ready for the heart, really, of, uh, of Leaves of Grass. Certainly many believe the heart, the Song of Myself. Of course, at 2A, well, it's going to be a fun ride, isn't it? That's the point he's making. We are now done with the introductory set of poems and lines, and we're ready to get on into Song of Myself, right? Uh, at 2B, we've mentioned all of the O's of this poem, the language of excitement, of joy. Some would call it ecstasy. At 3A, I mentioned Song of the Open Road, and the way in which, just go already, you can jump just to Song of the Open Road and look at the last lines of Song of the Open Road, you're going to see so many ways at the end of the 50 seconds poem of, of Song of Myself. You're going to see the ways in which Whitman likes to end this. Go back and look at the end of, for example, Passage to India. We're going to see this over and over again, especially these long poems. Obviously, I've mentioned Paradise Lost and, uh, and Milton. And I think, I think Milton's Paradise Lost is all over Leaves of Grass, the way I think Whitman's Leaves of Grass is all over T.S. Eliot's Wasteland, Ash Wednesday, Four Quartets. I, I've given lectures on all of that to try and help, and try and help that. At 3B and finally, well, you have made it. And I want to congratulate you on that accomplishment. Uh, it is an accomplishment. Uh, you, can, you can now say, you know what, there's not a lot of people who have actually sat out and really studied starting from Pomenoc all 19 sections, and I've done that, and I've done the 24 sections of uh, poems of inscriptions, so does it feel like a triumph of a kind? He, that's his word. We have triumphed. We have made it. Yay, good job. And obviously the next question is, are you ready to move on now? to Song of Myself, which is incredibly difficult for us to talk about because we're going to have to ask, which Song of Myself? The one of 1855 or the deathbed edition poem that we'll be looking at? We'll be looking, by the way, at the deathbed edition just to get that question out of the way. Um, guys, I would love to be able to do side-by-side -side readings. I just don't have the time. However, I will be making observations of the ways in which many of those poems were edited. We're going to have to begin first with an introductory lecture and then we'll wade into the 52 poems sections of Song of Myself. I hope you're enjoying our talks with Walt. I know I am. Thank you.